Nick Spencer continues to complement the main hunted storyline inside Amazing Spider-Man 18.hu. What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is going to be an irate review, and today we are talking about Amazing Spider-Man 18.hu, which is a complimentary issue written by Nick Spencer and deals with the hunted storyline, specifically the Gibbon. The Gibbon's a character that wasn't necessarily a real big influence on Spider-Man's history, but we're taking a look back at his history himself to see if maybe he can become some sort of sympathetic character. But let's dive into the book and see what's in store. The Hunted storyline from Nick Spencer is dominating the Amazing Spider-Man titles, and it's so big that they actually have to add additional .hu episodes. So, with this one, we actually get 18.hu, which tells the story of the Gibbon. And looking back at the history, we see that he's obtained his mutation early on in life, and this isn't going to be a story like what we expect. The dialogue is insulting for the character, and overall, the laughter just means that he was ridiculed early on in his life. And where we pick up, he's being hunted by these craven robots inside modern times. He's part of this villain cadre that has been captured by Craven to be target practice for these wealthy individuals that want to spend money to kill supervillains. And as he tries to escape, he starts to remember various things. He tries to escape to the trees, just like he used to when he was a kid. The way that they couldn't get him, the trees, the rooftops, it's where he felt safe. But not everything worked out the way that he wanted it to. Despite the fact that this is a story, it should end with bullies getting their comeuppance, you know, getting their just desserts. However, a lot of the bullies from his youth ended up getting cushy jobs on Wall Street, and he and ended up in a circus inside a gorilla suit. However, he still found solace on the rooftops as he swung around New York City trying to become, well, a better version of himself. And that's when he ran into Spider-Man. And to say that he became obsessed, well, that might be a bit on the nose, but he definitely became fascinated with Spider-Man to the point where he wished that they could team up. So he trained himself, he ran across rooftops, he put on the gorilla suit that he had from the circus job, and he met him on the roof one day, which is approximately around Amazing Spider-Man number 110. However, when he tried to partner up with the Spider-Man, Spider-Man laughed at him, causing him to go out in a fit of rage and try to smash Spider-Man's skull in. This is a moment of regret and one of many moments of regret inside Martin's head. It's clear at this point in time that Nick Spencer is making the Gibbon a sympathetic character, somebody that's a victim of circumstance that has unfortunately found his way into this lifestyle and he wasn't really intending on ever being a criminal. In fact, his intentions were among the best of us. He had a hard life as a child where he was ridiculed, he had a hard life as an adult where a lot of the people that stepped on him and found success and he didn't, and then when he tried to reach out to somebody that he looked up to, he was turned down. It was just constant laughter. And as he finds himself getting shot with bullets, riddled with arrows, stabbed with knives, he looks into the face of these kill robots and he sees Craven the Hunter, the man that gave him the potion that turned him into an actual Gibbon, that made him more than some sort of mutation, made him the monster that he actually became. And the parallels between when he was downtrodden as a child, getting his face stomped in, to now where the robots are smashing his skull in with their own feet, it becomes a really tough thing to watch because you've felt sympathy for this character. You felt the emotional connection. You understand where he's coming from and to see him just get kicked and stabbed and punched and shot with arrows as he's just screaming out inside, please stop, you're hurting me. It's a really tough thing to watch. Nick Spencer is kind of flipping this entire scenario on its ear. Instead of making us feel like the villains are getting their just desserts, he's opening our eyes to different aspects of what it means to be a part of this villainous community, especially somebody that's this animal-themed and gets drawn into it just because of circumstance. However, Gibbon is saved at the last moment by Rhino, who just comes charging through these robots, leaving everybody to wonder where the monkey man went while they're trying to hunt down this rhinoceros. He recounts some better times, when the Gibbon teamed up with a grizzly to become a crime fighter duo, which was in Spectacular Spider-Man. When he found Princess Python, Zelda, his wife, the one that he took care of, she became blind and married and she loved him. However, that entire idea grew further apart as she gained her sight back, became better, and then ultimately left him, finally leaving Taskmaster and Black Ant to come capture him and bring him to this circus of criminals. He saw her. He saw his ex-wife running and he thought, maybe it's time for me to reconnect. Maybe I could tell her a joke. Maybe it's not too late. But it was too late. He ran into Spider-Man. He ran into Vulture, which we saw in Amazing Spider-Man number 18, and he made the bad decision again. Instead of trusting the good person, instead of trusting somebody that could be a friend, he relied on somebody that he thought he trusted, who ultimately betrayed him. It's a mistake that he continues to make, and, well, he's made a lot of mistakes. But as he finds his way up into the top of the trees, he feels the coldness of this imminent death kind of approaching him. He just wants to take a rest. He wants to be able to recover, but he falls, crashing down into the brush, leaving his body in the bushes for a couple to find. And while they're supposed to be hunting psychotic killers inside Central 
Central Park, this guy just wouldn't be able to hurt a fly. You know, he didn't even try to defend himself. He's far too hurt to really cause any kind of concerns to other people. So the best thing that they could do is put him out of his misery. And that's where they shoot him in the head. And Nick Spencer wastes no time going straight at your heartstrings by just putting this character out there, making you feel for him in a very short period of time, helping you understand where he's coming from. But then you follow up with the execution of him right at the base of the villain's feet. And he remembers as he's fading from existence, he remembers this time in Marvel Apes when he was transported to another dimension and everybody was like him. He didn't feel so alone. He was happy. And he actually helped out the Marvel Ape Avengers as they tried to take on some various tasks. But Spider-Man finds him and while most people tragically dying in a story like this would be able to spout out some sort of words, he can't do anything. Something about getting shot in the head keeps the words from coming to his mouth, and he just sits there in silence, being held by Spider-Man as things grow cold, and he finally passes. But at least no one's laughing. And that's where we end Amazing Spider-Man 18.HU, which was completely unexpected. While I thought that it was going to be a ride through the Gibbons history that's going to make us feel some sympathy for the character, but possibly ending in a team-up or something along those lines, this isn't that. This is a, essentially a comic book version of a snuff film as we watch this man unfold his life both retrospectively and actively as he has it taken from him by these people that are just out there with credit cards trying to get a cheap thrill. There's a place for this character that unfortunately was not found inside the comic books until this very moment and it was used as a punctuation, a poignant piece of Spider-Man's story so that that way he can be motivated or dejected as we move forward in the hunted storyline. As far as Ken Lashley's art, I think it was pretty fantastic. The difference in tone between the history and the present was a really exciting endeavor, but ultimately it's just one of those comic books where if I'm looking at it and I read it, I feel dirty with my participation in the actual execution of this character. It feels like he should have been more. It feels like he should have come out on the other side, but unfortunately not all of us are so lucky. But I want to know what you guys think, so hit me up in the comments down below and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books and more.